Hi guys, my name is Irina Francis and you are watching MS TV. Right here at the Olympia Expo, two legends of the Iron Game, Tony Freeman and Mike Ashley. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to see you. Excellent. Can you, can you hear us? Yes, I'm doing great. Feeling alive and healthy and wealthy. So when I saw Mike, I was like, damn, I got to talk to my boy. I haven't seen him in 20 years. Man, I'm doing fantastic. And it's just a joy to see Tony. You know, last time I saw him was in the battle days when he competed. And then recently I saw an interview with him, with Dave Palumbo, and I was so excited to see him and learn about all the new things that he's doing. And I said, man, I got to touch base with Tony at some point. And look, here we are at the Olympia. We're having a little reunion. I call this place the home of the reunions, you know? Yeah. You guys competed in different eras, but Tony, you, you were the age of Swanda. You were, you were like forever. Bro, I still was competing at the same time. He was pro and I was amateur. Yep, yep. What if my age. He's trying oh, to show my age. age. <laughs> he just got there before me, that's all. I, I, I took the long route. What is the biggest difference you think between the days of your days and the days of today with bodybuilding? Well, we actually had to do the work because we didn't know yet. These guys get to benefit from our knowledge and wisdom experience and so they kind of fast track things. But this is your life, this is your muscle. So we, I, we had to like, I mean it took me, I've been doing this 30 years. You know what I'm saying? I see, like Nick Waller, he turned pro 24 months ago. And now he's competing with the best of the best and really making them look like they just got here. So it's just a difference. You have more knowledge, more technology, and things are way faster. We, took this, we had to do it really slow and grind it out. Yeah, I think bodybuilding back in our time, there was not a lot of research um, around actually bodybuilding itself. You know, everything was for football, track athletes, all of that. And now there's a lot more data. So there is a lot more ways to actually perform better um, you know in terms of strength training programs there's a lot more information for periodization programs catering to bodybuilding and in terms of nutrition I mean the diet there's so much more science around it and supplementation so I will say these guys have the opportunity to evolve at a much faster rate we actually made a lot of mistakes kind of pioneering so you know a lot of the work has been done so all they got to do is apply the information and one thing, I'm in the print magazine industry still. I'm, I'm stubborn. I won't give up. I still do print as part of my company. You guys, when I was first getting into the magazines, all over the Weeder magazines and MD and everything, I just saw Muscle and Fitness is doing a quarterly print magazine again, and they got it at their thing. What do you think is the biggest difference between print magazines with bodybuilding, how big they were, versus somebody scrolling on an iPhone reading it? Well, I told everybody... When I first came out, we had books, actual books about high intensity training and nutrition, and I studied them all. A lot of these guys learned from the magazines, and now you got social media, so there you get to see, it's kind of like seed time harvest. So now people are trying to harvest without planting seeds. So it took us decades, and these guys are getting it in months. Like Big Ramen gained 100 pounds in maybe three or four years, where it took me, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years to do that. So that's, what I'm, that's the difference. I, th I think we have to accept the fact that we're evolving, um, you know. When we look at the days of Arnold, I mean, I think he got like $700 when he won the first Mr. Olympia. And the prize money tonight, I'm sure, is going to be over $400,000. So we are evolving, and that's what mankind is about. Um, you know, when we speak in terms of the history of, you know, print magazine compared to the social media environment now that on the Internet, yes, we should evolve, but I think there still is a place for print. And there's always going to be a place for print. I certainly hope so, because that's where we're in the game. Where can people find you guys online and look you up and follow you? Thank you so much. Oh, Tony Freeman. I mean, TFX Man 305 on Instagram. You can just DM me, and then I'll reach back out. Yeah, say fit, SayFitness.com. S-A-Y, SayFitness.com. Yes, yes, yes. Two legends of the Iron Game, Tony Freeman, the X-Man, and Mike Ashley. Thank you so much. Sport TV, baby. Boom.
obviously when you're at the expo and you walk across a competitor looking like this, it's very hard not to stop and, and ask, who is she, what's her name? And she doesn't speak English, unfortunately, but we have a friend, the translator. What's your name and what? What's your name and, and what's the young lady? My name is Susana, uh, Susana Rodriguez. <laughs> Uh, my name is Susana. I'm a wellness division pro. I'm a athlete pro. And. Uh, um, uh, she said that uh, she was a wellness pro. And this year was the first time the wellness pro in Olympia show. And she's very happy. And what do you think about her? This was my first time seeing wellness, obviously. It's only been in the NPC so far. The crowd was going nuts. I mean, it was a lot of fun covering it and watching it. Um, as far as, where did she get her pro card? What show did she turn pro? Okay. He said that it's the first time he's doing the cobertura pro. How did you start? Yes, how did you start? Eu conquistei o meu Procard tem um ano e meio mais ou menos na Colômbia. É, eu fui a primeira atleta wellness profissional da categoria a conseguir o cartão profissional. E eu já fiz vários shows após isso. E é o meu primeiro Olímpia e eu estou muito feliz de estar tá participando. Foram mais de 20 atletas. Aí... And happy. <laughs> she said uh, he got her prof prof professional card. Uh, she was the first wellness professional. He got it uh, in Colombia, uh, Olympia, South America. Uh, it was uh, last year. And My first Olympia. Yeah, this is her first Olympia for all. And there are many athletes competing, uh, about uh, 24 athletes. And she's very happy with the results and the, the championship. Did she compete in any other division like figure or bikini before wellness or did she start in wellness? wellness. No, she always wellness. She starts in wellness that is a Brazilian division originally and always wellness. Let's see the best pose there on her for the wellness. Now that's what I call a championship wellness physique. First year of wellness, thank you very much for bringing it to the IFBB. It's wonderful. Hi there, you're watching MSTV. I'm Allie Lewis with DNA Hair Tools at Mr. Olympia. Woo! going in three two one we're here at 2021 olympia expo muscle vodka booth with grace grace I, I, it almost sounds like an oxymoron muscle vodka come on now tell, tell what's the deal with it so you don't even have to go to the gym you just drink this i'm kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> great give me a case right so it's all gluten-free organic no gmo sugar-free carb-free the least amount of calories you can get in a vodka 32 times charcoal filter distilled from 100 percent corn and so so delicious what's the uh the alcohol volume content it's still 80 proof vodka 
So it's just like everybody else's vodka, but it's actually not as bad for you. It's got the better stuff in it, and I'm sure it tastes wonderful, right? Yes, and it also, we take all the minerals, the impurities out of it to make it the cleanest form of water possible, so there will be no hangover unless you mix it with sugar. That's what gives you the hangover, sugar. Stay away from the sugar. Hit the vodka. What's your favorite thing to mix it with? I drink it straight up. <laughs> straight up? Not even kidding, because it's so smooth. It doesn't have that burning sensation going down. We just won three of the biggest liquor shows in the world. In the world. These guys are award-winning. MuscleVodka.com, I assume, is the site? Net. net. MuscleVodka.net right here at the 2021 Olympia Expo with Grace. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Should you do buys and tries the same day or different days? Well, that's up to you. Old guy's training tip. Here we are. Depending on what you like, I personally like to do them together. I do arms the first day of the week. On the last video, I said chest day on Tuesday because everybody's using all the benches on Monday. So Monday, I do buys and tries. I like to do biceps usually first, but most of the time what I'll do is I'll superset them. So I'm kind of doing them concurrently, if you will. Um, but uh, if I'm going to do an exercise that's just going to be a straight one without a superset of the, uh, the, the opposite included, respectively, buys or tries, I usually do biceps first. <coughs> Obviously, excuse me, some weeks I'll switch it up. But for the most part, I feel that Biceps are worked better when they're not, there's no pre-exhaustion set in. It's a little harder of a movement to do a pull than a push. So I feel that I can get away with being pre-exhausted and then pushing out some close grip uh, bench press or, uh, you know, push downs or, you know, whatever. <coughs> oh, holy Toledo, why am I coughing? Um, so that's really up to you. So this is kind of a two-parter. It's should you do arms together, biceps and triceps, or do them separate? And if you are doing them together, if you cho chose choice A, which one do you do first? Like I just said, I just gave you my reasons. But all of this, you might say, oh, that's he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. I do it like this because, does it work? When you do your biceps and or triceps, do you feel like you're getting a pump out of it? Do you feel like you're doing good? Are you growing? Then you're doing it right. My way may suck for you. Your way may suck for me. Your way may be better. Tell me. Let me look. <laughs> I could grow a lot. Trust me. The only thing I got you beat on is my fucking nose. I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everybody with that one. I just can't reach them because of my nose. It stands first. But, buys and tries, I choose to do them together. I used to do different push-pull things, and I would do them uh, triceps with chest and all that. I find that I get a much better workout with uh, uh, arms when I do them by themselves, not lumped in with another body part. I usually do one body part a day. The only day I don't do one is Mondays, which I do buys and tries together. And I do four arms every day. Uh, so that, to me, uh, it, it, that just goes along with it. Um, and I just do four sets of four arms. I think I did a video on that once before uh, of my routine when it comes to four arms, at least in the gym. Uh, so when you do your biceps and triceps, mix it up a little. Uh, I, I tend to feel that I get a better 
set and superset if I do the bicep portion first and then I superset it directly into a tricep uh, movement. Um, uh, a lot of times if I just do the three, sometimes I'll just go do my back to backs, do, do three sets of uh, let's say alternating type of things where I don't do any rest in between and I just bang bang left right left right left right obviously I'm not jumping in and doing triceps or biceps with that one so I feel like I'm getting a good concentrated pump on that particular muscle group uh, so uh, biceps and triceps you do whatever you feel but if yours isn't working for you do that one day don't say, oh, I'm going to do my triceps. You have to do my chest and shoulders. Are you kidding me? By then, your triceps are fucking cooked. You don't even need to do them at that point. You're going to get shit out of it that way. They're pre, pre-exhausted. And that's, uh, you know, the old push-pull method, six-day routine, where you're doing way too much in one day. And it definitely suffers the second and third body part that you're doing is not getting anywhere near the intensity that you're giving that first one that you do attention to. So... Check it out. Give it a shot. If it ain't for you, stick with what works for you. This old guy's training tip is being brought to you by Old School Iron, who are going to be the title sponsor of our 2022 Arnold Classic on-site coverage in sunny Columbus, Ohio. Go to musclesportmag.com slash store. Order your magazine. Single issues, but why would you do that? $32 a year. Free shipping in the United States for a year, a full year subscription, and of course, old school iron guys have been with us for a long time. My buddy Darren out Vacaville, California, you'll see their ad right there. They do franchising, so if you're looking to open a gym, Johnny's Gym, nobody's gonna come to it. Old school iron, you're gonna be already franchised, you're already gonna have a fucking name before you even fucking open the door for the first time. Old school iron.com, and it's school with a K. Proud to announce that Old School Iron will be the title sponsor of all our coverage of the Arnold Sports Festival Knee Classic 2022 Arnold Classic. Finally back and is a uh, the normal place, normal time, normal days, normal expo uh, after a two-year absence due to the pandemic and all the restrictions and everything. So we will be on the scene in Columbus, Ohio, March 3rd through 7th. And we will be staying at one of the host hotels right across the street from uh, the convention center, the Doubletree Hotel. I've stayed there before. I think I stayed there like in 2010, quite some time ago. Nice hotel. There's like, I think there's like three host hotels. Um, but that's that's one that's it's pretty cool because it's right across the street and uh, very convenient to get back and forth between the expo and the show and all of that stuff. But I definitely want to thank OldSchoolLion.com. And my buddy Darren Manahan for being the title sponsor of our coverage of the 2022 Arnold Classic. Of course, the new, brand new issue, Volume 13, Number 1, with Mark Loebliner on the cover. And of course, the aforementioned Old School Iron is there. They're franchises, guys. You can open an Old School Iron any way you want. First one's in Vacaville, California. They got others around the country. OldSchoolIron.com. Thank you so much for being part of our MSM family and title sponsoring our big trip coming up in Columbus, Ohio next week.